about uh, our system of behavior. We always talk about PBIS. We are a PBIS school. And one of the things we always have a concern about that is how it's affecting our kids and seeing if it's effective in managing their behavior. Teachers, you can come find your materials at any time. So, uh, next slide, please. So one of the things we want to talk about is we always talk about uh, idea, and we have that idea of least restrictive environment. We're stuck with that. That's the law now. But we don't really think about how it learns to the EBD students, one with emotional and behavior disorders. We're always stuck thinking of it as ones with just learning disabilities. We don't really think about how it affects them because technically they can learn just as well as everybody else. They're just not able to function within an uh, inclusive classroom or a collaborative setting. And I wanted to see how PBIS affects that. Next slide, please. So the concerns we talk about, those students can be difficult to control, to predict their behavior, and they can be difficult to instruct. Those are three of the major differences that we deal with when we face those students on a daily basis. Uh, research has shown that teachers do not feel prepared for having EBD students in their classroom. They're saying that that is something that they're not taught in teacher education. Research has shown, Brunel data research study says, teachers flat out uh, express fears regarding their inability to teach children with special needs while at the same time teaching their regular children. So this is something that research has shown is true. Even if it was from 1985, it's still there. Next slide, please. Um, so my research question, the, pur the purpose of my research project was to determine, does PBIS, which stands for Positive Behavior Intervention and Supports, does it help those students labeled as EBD uh, behave better in an inclusive setting? We wanted to find out if that was actually effective in helping them stay in the classroom and learn a little bit more. So we have to talk about how everything went down. Next slide, please. The variables, they had an independent variable. Uh, this was the fidelity that PBIS was implemented with. And I think we can all agree that that's pretty standard here. We're trained on it every year, sometimes more than once a year. We're evaluated on a walkthrough on a, you know, at least biannual basis. Uh, we talked about the different things we have, such as the uh, training of it, the things like the praise, currency, the reward system we have in place. The dependent variable, quite frankly, is like how the students responded to whatever our intervention was. Did they respond to praise? Did they respond to those rewards we have? That's what we had to determine. So those are the things that could have changed. Next slide, please. Uh, basically, we had some limitations on the study as well. We only had two students last year that were considered to be EBD. Uh, that I could get to consent to this, and uh, one identified as Caucasian, one identified as African American. We didn't have much in the way of diversity, it was a small population, but those were the people that I had to go with during the research project. Next slide, please. Okay, so I had to do some literature review, I had to look and see what studies had shown about this, and, and these students are a concern because we're worried about how they do on test scores. I think we're all obviously always worried about that in the back of our minds, if nothing else. Uh, this quote says that accountability for all students to make academic social gains has become increasingly important. And that is that even though these students are obviously having issues, we still need them to perform on tests. We still need them to step up and you know, be able to be in the classroom to get the instruction. Because many people would say if they're not in that classroom, they're not getting that high level of instruction. Um, the second thing it says is regular education teachers have to deal with issues that they were not prepared for or that they're suddenly like very concerned about that they don't feel ready to do. Uh, another thing researchers, they found that the middle school is dramatically affected by this. This is the period of time where they are actually working with this. They are only focused on surface uh, engagement. They're not talking about actually like being uh, serious depth of learning. They're just focused, you know, on primary basis so to, uh, as it says, survival orientation. They're in survival mode when they're almost superficially engaged. So even if they're in their classroom, they're not really paying attention. So there's obviously a lot of research showing that these kids, uh, even if they get into an inclusive setting, they're just not focusing. Next slide, please. Uh, one of the things, the methodology, this is what my research project was designed. PBIS teachers, of course, were always expected to adhere to the system's four to one behavior ratio. Four positive interactions to each negative interaction. We're held to that standard and we always strive for it, sometimes with good success, sometimes when well, we need to work on it a little bit. Again, some examples of the two, we have specific targeted praise, like being prepared, uh, it was a good answer, or taking a leadership role, we have things like that. We have the rewards, like preferential seating, or uh, you know, school currency, we have those things. Each teacher is expected to monitor on their implementation of the PBI system, so this is part of the project. We had to be monitored on how well we implemented it, and you guys helped out with that. Next slide, please. Uh, again, this lasted eight weeks uh, during the fall of 2014. Like I said, there were two students that were flagged with emotional or behavioral disorders. Uh, and there was a data sheet that was created for me to collect my data, and you guys got that. So, next slide, please. Uh, the three sources of data we had, there was a teacher survey, but it had two things on there that we filled out. 
it was the number of the interventions and the frequency. That was how frequently we gave those positive interactions up to. It was the number of times we could say, I had a positive interaction with this student. The second one was a Likert scale on behavior. That was simply from a scale of one to 10, with low being the, uh, one being the lowest, 10 being the highest, how well that kid did that week. That was the way that we did that. And third one was simply the average number of interventions weekly. That was with the average number of uh, interactions we had for both students because we had to think about that. So that was the design line and the data collection. Next slide, please. Okay, so as we start to look at the results here, this is simply a bar graph, which we represented a little bit better on this one too. Each series represents the classroom teachers that we collected the data on. Uh, series one will be teacher one, student, student two, stuff like that. This is for student one. Uh, one of the things to pay attention to is there are a couple of days uh, that you'll notice that they max out at eight. Uh, eight was the highest that they got for that week, showing that they were good, probably not great, because 10 was the highest. Uh, but there's also examples too where this teacher, I believe that's teacher two, um, that student was sent out that day. There was no way to get an accurate read on their behavior. Uh, so obviously PBIS was not effective that day or something was going on that that student was not able to function in the classroom. So we're dealing with some other things. Uh, next slide, please. Like I said, this is the teacher average rating for student one. <coughs> this is where the teachers gave them their rating. This is the scale of one to 10 on how that kid acted uh, overall. And you can see numbers like 4.125, teacher two, uh, probably one of the highest, 4.8. So when you think about the fact that that scale was from one to 10, so both of those averages are all of them actually pretty low when you think about that. That means that uh, clearly they were still having some issues functioning in the classroom. PBIS was not effective in raising those scores from something that we kind of expect our other students to be at. Uh, next slide, please. This was student two's behavior rating. As you can see, it has a few more uh, peaks rather than valleys. They had some mostly good days as well. Um, again, a couple of bad days of two. They had teacher one had a bad day with that one as well on uh, week four. So you can kind of see, uh, I think teacher four right there in week seven had a, uh, probably an issue with that student as well. Next slide, please. This is the average for this one. This student did a little bit better. Uh, you can see their averages are things like six and 7.25. 8.125, they had a really good progression ship, teacher uh, three and this student. Uh, the other ones that we had, teacher four, were 5.6, 7.375. So this student uh, seemed to have done better overall, but again, it's hard to contribute that to PBIS. Next slide, please. Okay. This one uh, was the average teacher positive interactions weekly. Now, let's explain what this means again. This is both students combined, and this is how many times the teacher said, I had a positive interaction with this kid this week, but it's all eight weeks averaged out. So uh, that should be, you know, a higher obviously too. We want to strive for that four to one ratio. And here we see a teacher say that they had 3.75. We have uh, four of them over four. Uh, so that's desirable. That's the goal we wanted to get at. So the interactions were on that level. But uh, teacher one, for whatever reason, like I said, could be the relationship, could be the lack of PBIS implementation, simply did not work. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so we've seen the data. Just to discuss, so two, teacher five was viewed as the most positive, but the strange thing was when asked, the students did not say, out of all teachers, teacher five was the most positive. Uh, so that was a very interesting result um, because they didn't view that person as being positive, even though the teacher, by data, was supported to be the most positive. So again, we can't say that the positive thing comes down to focusing on uh, just the interactions. It might be something to do more with a relationship or some other variable that we don't know about. Uh, and the long story short is PBIS was just not shown to be effective in appropriate behavior for those students. It did not do anything to impact their behavior from where they had been, obviously, in and out of the classroom. So we have well, no, one more slide, I think, if we can get to that one. The limitations, actually we have a couple more slides. It was only eight weeks long, so it was kind of a snapshot of what could happen. Uh, it might function a little bit better if it was an all-year study, perhaps. Uh, two students involved, once again, we did have a small population. We might want to consider moving this to, like, say, the district level if we wanted to change, uh, you know, everybody's mind on this and see if it works. Uh, five teachers involved, including the teacher researcher. Could include more teachers, like the entire school or a district grade level. Some other ways to continue this on to the next level. So I want you guys to realize that this can be blown up uh, in other ways to look at this as well. Next slide, please. I believe it was just my suggestions. Yeah. Uh, like I said, increase the population. Uh, of course, we had very little adversity. We only want to begin with only two people. That's a concern. And PBIS combined with something might be a little bit more effective, like some other more concrete reward system. 
or uh, a monitoring method of some type, we're not entirely sure, but you could always go to the next level of the thing if you want to. Next slide, please. Okay, I think a couple of references here from my actual research project that uh, has some information that I need to listen. So thank you guys for your time, uh, and I appreciate that.